In 2004, I got pregnant with my first child, and it was a relatively flawless pregnancy. Um, when I, I was hardly sick, I had the typical tiredness, but I thought I was pretty lucky. When I was about 26 weeks pregnant in February of 2004, I woke up one day and just randomly threw up for no reason. So then the end of that week on Friday, I remember Friday morning, I was finally feeling like I was turning the corner and feeling better and I was looking forward to going back to work on Monday. And then that night, uh, when my husband came home, my head just started pounding like I have never experienced before. So I called my girlfriend, um, Beth, and she said, you really need to call the doctor, that's why they're there. And she actually was the first person that ever mentioned the word preeclampsia to me. My husband and I jumped in the car and we went to the hospital and the minute they took my blood pressure, my blood pressure was 200 over 110. And of course, being young and not familiar at all with what even 200 over 110 meant, I said, oh, is that bad? <laughs> And they said, yeah. I remember they came up to me and they said, okay, we need to t transfer you by ambulance to a different hospital where there's a level three NICU. And I said, well, for what? And they said, because we need a bed for the baby. The, the concept of having a baby at 27 weeks was not, it was totally foreign. And he looked at me and said, you have severe preeclampsia. And I remember I looked at him and I asked him, like the words just came out of my mouth that I said, am I gonna die? Research confirms Jamie's experience over a decade ago was quite typical. Fewer than half of women reported receiving information during their pregnancies about preeclampsia signs or symptoms. I remember being in and out of consciousness and I remember at one point the doctor saying to Joe, we're afraid your wife's brain is gonna swell. We have to deliver this baby. And being forced with that choice of, you know, do we deliver the baby to save your wife, knowing that the baby may die. He made a very difficult decision to deliver the baby. Her name was Grace and she was born at one pound, 11 ounces. So I was finally released from the hospital the following Friday. And then Monday morning, the NICU nurse called me and said, Grace developed an infection overnight. And I instantly started crying. At the end of the day, she went into cardiac arrest five times and her body was just too little to fight off the infection. Because she was delivered so early as a result of the preeclampsia, she ultimately died from it. She was eight days, 11 hours, 13 minutes old. She died in our arms and it was the most devastating thing I've ever been through in my life. My blood pressures were out of control. I was severely preeclamptic very early in this pregnancy. So we delivered at uh, 21 and a half weeks. A little girl, uh, her name is Angela. She lived 11 minutes and we spent 11 minutes, 11 minutes of her life as a family. I went home shortly thereafter from the hospital and thought, I'm on my road to healing, but I just wasn't feeling well. One of the big signs of preeclampsia is, is headache. I thought, well, it should be cured now, but it really wasn't. And so I started Googling and I ran into the Preeclampsia Foundation. I, I read on the website, there was a great frequently asked questions section, and that's where I found out about postpartum preeclampsia. That not only can it happen postpartum, but it can return for people who've had it before. The Preeclampsia Foundation is the only major foundation uh, directed at the area of preeclampsia, uh, which is somewhat surprising since it's such a, a major cause of maternal morbidity and mortality and a common obstetric problem in this country and around the world. A few weeks after um, we went through the process of the funeral, I just, I was angry and I was upset and I was hurting and I was still sick and I was searching for answers. And I started to look online and that's when I found the Preeclampsia Foundation. There was a forum, an online forum, and I logged into the online forum and all of a sudden I was connected to all these women who had preeclampsia. Some had suffered losses, some had uh, had healthy babies but had had very difficult journeys that they went through. I met fathers whose wives had died from it. And to have that connection and to be able to connect with these other women and have this support group was phenomenal for my healing emotionally. Since the foundation's launch of the community forum, it has stayed on top of the social media phenomenon and enlarged the communication channels it uses to reach and be available to a diverse audience. And we're now on our third generation of a dynamic website that is the go-to resource for a global audience. I knew I wanted to do something the morning after Grace died. I remember waking up and looking at her picture and thinking very clearly that the reason, the purpose of her life would not end with her death. 
So that year, simultaneously, I worked on both launching the Walkathon, the National Walkathon for Preeclampsia, and we launched um, the fundraiser Saving Grace. Since 2010, when the Foundation's Awareness Walks were rebranded to the Promise Walk for Preeclampsia, 25,000 people have participated in dozens of cities each year. Millions of media messages have helped inform the public about preeclampsia. For us, having the first Promise Walk in South Carolina um, just a year after our loss was um, a huge moment in our life, in our healing process. And um, it kind of, I would say it encouraged our families and friends and also members of the community to learn more about this condition, to talk about you know, other pregnancy related issues that they, they're aware of or have experienced themselves and almost break the silence on the whole situation. Public engagement got a huge boost when a nationwide petition campaign, along with friends in Congress, helped the foundation secure May as National Preeclampsia Awareness Month. Now, more than 40 organizations help communicate important messages about preeclampsia awareness every May and beyond. A 2014 national survey demonstrated that we're making progress. More than 80% of today's pregnant women are aware of preeclampsia as a life-threatening disorder of pregnancy. Even the Saving Grace Gala itself has been a catalyst for informing new communities every year about a devastating disease that most people had never heard of. They are uh, just incredible events where patients uh, come who have been affected by this disorder and uh, practitioners and investigators like myself also attend. I find them very invigorating and in encouraging to continue the work we're doing in this area of medicine. The Preeclampsia Foundation's Executive Director was a keynote speaker at the 2012 National Meeting for thousands of obstetricians and gynecologists. In 2013, an entire chapter on patient education was included in newly released national guidelines. So far, three states, California, New York, and Florida, have adopted the foundation's education materials, just a fraction of the hundreds of thousands of pieces that have been distributed to date. They also participate in numerous task forces to reduce maternal and infant mortality and morbidity. After Grace was born, the doctors told me, you know, you probably shouldn't get pregnant again. Our oldest son now, Brian, he's adopted and um, he's eight years old. And then in 2008, I got pregnant again and um, so Josie Ray was born in June of 2009 and I was watched very closely and then I got pregnant with Katie and so in March of 2011 um, again I was I was very cognizant during my whole pregnancy of all the signs and symptoms and I saw the doctor regularly in March of 2011 on a Sunday I was diagnosed with preeclampsia and Monday I had a placental abruption and so we delivered her and she was 35 weeks she spent 16 days in the NICU, but she's home and healthy. Because so much is still not known about what causes it, how to prevent or cure preeclampsia and related conditions, the foundation must move research forward. The Vision Grant Program has allowed novel research ideas to be tested, inspired young investigators to career-long commitments, and contributed important pieces of information to a complex problem. With this half a million dollar investment, it has also opened doors for large scale funding from the National Institutes of Health and other major funders. The registry that the Preeclampsia Foundation began in 2013 has the potential for being a gold mine for uh, learning more about the disorder of preeclampsia. In today's world, the only way to get things done is through collaboration, advocacy, and effective partnerships. The foundation works with dozens of professional organizations, companies, public officials, and like-minded nonprofit organizations to catalyze research and improve education and support. This year is the 10th year, and not only is it the 10th year of the gala, but this marks 10 years since Grace's birth. So it's very humbling and exciting for me and for Joe to see the legacy that Grace's life has left.